Hey guys, Joyce and Anthony, aka JJ, and in the third and final video of this fishing hut series, we are going to animate the river with the brush strokes tools add-on. So this is where we left off video number two. So for video number three, I'm going to select the river. Wait, let me turn that on so we can see. So my river is selected. I'm pressing in for the sidebar to appear. And just like we've done previously, we're going to select fill. Okay, it's using the same material that is for the ground and I do not want that. So I'm gonna go to the material tab and select that little number to the side to create a new material. And I'll just call it river brush strokes. I want these brush strokes to be a little bit darker than the river. So I'm gonna try to find like a darker blue color. Since this is a river, I'm going to turn the roughness way down and I'm gonna turn up the metallic to make it shiny. Let me turn the roughness even more down. And let's go to the effects. Right now I have the crayon effect. I'm just gonna see, uh, that doesn't look bad. And let me see if I change a brush. Yeah, let me turn the metallic up. Maybe if I turn, mm, I'm trying to just play around the color variation. Let me go to shape, cause I need to adjust the width. Mm, maybe the length, uh, maybe play around with the noise and the random tilt. We're getting there. Let me increase the density. Okay, I'm gonna make the color, it's, it's too dark. I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. something is still off maybe if I adjust the level of the effect and again like this part you're just experimenting you honestly you're like touching every button to see which one works and I just click trim to mesh because I didn't like how the strokes were extending past the scene and that's what trim to mesh does it cuts that part off that goes farther than the mesh and I'm just continuing to play with noise. Mm. Make sure you always save in case Blender crashes. Let me decrease the roughness. I still feel like I don't have the right effect Maybe, no, maybe rake. I feel like that's the best one that like looks like a river. Mm, no, I'm gonna go back to rake. I'm gonna click the drop down of rake and play with the factor and the scale. Let's see if either of those make it look a little. Mm. If I turn down the color very eh. okay, I'm about to move on. I spent too much time. Okay, let me just play with the width one more time. The link. I don't like how the brush strokes are extending past the width. I did do trim to mesh, but I'm gonna do shrink wrap as well. Which basically it shrinks the brush strokes to the mesh. 
I mean, if what if I turn down the... Mm, no. That's fine for now. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm gonna make this the, the stream foam. I'm gonna make this white to make it more, when it's time to animate, it will make it look more like a river with the white included. I want this material to be different, a different color than what we just created, the stream. So I select the number to make a new material. I'm going to rename this River Foam Brush Strokes. And now I'm going to make this like a white dish color. Mm, that's fine. I'm going to turn up the roughness because it's foam, you know, and turn maybe slightly turn on the metallic. I think another brush will be, yeah. And I'm going to try to see if there's I'll keep the fade effect on and let me go to shape definitely need to decrease the width let me turn off the line so we can see it better okay we're getting there let me maybe play around with the length maybe the scale should I increase or decrease the density? I guess, in, or, no, I'm sorry, decrease it slightly. Okay, I think our river looks good. Okay, my river scene is done, but if I go and try to play the animation, nothing is gonna happen, it's static. To change that, we need to go to distribution. And let me, just give me one second, I'm gonna minimize the other drop downs. Okay, I'm gonna show you first, then explain. So in distribution, I'm gonna go where it says seed and click link to context. And then in the seed, I'm going to type in hashtag frame. The link to context button in Blender creates a driver that connects the selected property to another value. By linking it to context and typing frame, you're making the seed value dynamically update based on the current frame number. Thanks, ChatGPT. Now that we did what we did, let's click play. And there is our animation. It's actually way too fast. So I'm going to type in frame divided by let's try four so i guess every fourth frame it's going to move that's fine so over the seed i'm right clicking and i'm going to click copy driver because if you remember the original stream i'm going to click on that and do what we just did i just want to see how it looks just to experiment so i'm going to right click and then paste driver and let's see how that looks. Okay, I'm clicking Command Z because I have a Mac just to undo that. I'm just gonna keep the foam to have like the animated look. What if I do frame divided by five? Let's see how that looks. And this is our finished result. In video one, we went over the trees and the ground. In video number two, the roof, the little bridge and the rocks. And then finally in video number three, we animated the river. You have to give credit where credit was due. Everything I've learned so far when it comes to this brushstroke add-on was the training that's provided from the Blender Studio. They have demo files like the rendered and then the base model, which is what we used for these experiments. And then there's seven videos that goes over basic fill layers, what we just went over, the animated river, painting the hut, and so much more. So if you join the Blender Studio, you get access to this training. Well, thank you guys so much for watching these three videos where we experimented with the brush stroke tools add-on. This is Joyce and Anthony, a.k.a. JJ. Until next time.